This is a Canadian postal van powered by Rivian. The same week as the R2 and surprising R3 reveals, it was announced that Rivian is working with Morgan Olson on an all-electric postal van. It was revealed at the work truck show in Indianapolis. I got to walk through it and lots of other EVs, so hit that subscribe button if you dare. Some background for people not from Canada, eh? Canada Post, I'll call them CP, took many years to put together their government requirements for a next-generation mail truck, much like the U.S. Postal Service took a long time, too. A winning design was selected from Morgan Olson, a U.S. truck bodybuilder. It's built on a Ford F-150 chassis and a Ford gas engine, manufactured in Virginia, and it went into production and service last year. But before the first trucks hit their route, Canada Post realized they forgot something in the requirements. Zero tailpipe emissions. The U.S. did the same thing. Government contracts can take so long that some obvious new technologies can get overlooked. CP recently committed to electrify half of its 14,000 vehicle fleet by 2030. And since these vans are designed to last a long time, they better have a plan to start soon. Never fear, Morgan Olson is here. At the work truck show last year, they showed a demonstrator of the same C-250 ICE converted into an electric van. That's the handsome green van you see here. Details were scarce, but it was still based on an F-150, same wheelbase, steering column, that's a giveaway, it's a Ford. They said it can be configured as rear-wheel drive or optional four-wheel drive because it snows in Canada sometimes. The van was just a demonstrator, not their final design. Now to the 2024 work truck show, they came back with their updated proposal. And yes, it's powered by Rivian. Here are the details. It's based on the Rivian ECV 500. That's a, a modified name for the commercial version of the van that anyone can buy. EDV is a package delivery van that's specific to Rivian, as they specified. It's on a 157-inch wheelbase, so that's 16 inches longer than the ICE version using the F-150 chassis. Morgan Olson had to create a longer wheelbase body for the C250E, but that's okay because they make bodies for a living. Now, you may be wondering, why didn't CP just use the Rivian body? Well, that's because the ECV or EDV was designed for package delivery, not just mail delivery. Amazon and other last mile delivery companies have boxes, often very large boxes, way larger than they need to be. CP and USPS have bulk mail, letters, magazines, mostly small stuff that gets sorted into totes. The C250 body with its side doors makes that access easier for the mail carrier. And the occasional box, there's still space for that in the back. Standard configuration is a front-wheel drive powered by a single Rivian Enduro motor. The battery pack is a 100 kilowatt hour lithium iron phosphate. LFP batteries are less expensive and more robust, but a little bit heavier. With Rivian's body on it, range is up to 161 miles. The Morgan Olsen body is not as streamlined as the Rivian, but the frontal area is smaller, so if I were to bet, I would guess the range estimate meets or exceeds that by a little bit. Now, I did peek inside, more on that in a bit, and if you do the math for the range displayed on the display, it estimates closer to 145 miles, but that could be real-world driving calculations based on how this vehicle was driven. It uses a CCS charge port like the current Rivian's. So far, commercial EVs are sticking to CCS versus the Tesla plug, which is now called J3400, but over time, I would expect that to change. You can AC charge it slow or overnight or fast charge it, when Rivian announced availability of the van outside of Amazon, a 100 kilowatt charging speed was indicated. With LFP batteries, charging to 100% on a daily basis is acceptable. One question I forgot to ask, will this be available in all-wheel drive? The current Rivian van is front-wheel drive only. The C250E demonstrator that they showed last year said it would have optional all-wheel drive. So is that a must for CP? Morgan Olsen plans to deliver an undisclosed number of these vans to them for testing. Perhaps that's something they want to try out. Is front-wheel drive sufficient to get through Canadian winters? 
If not, would Rivian be willing to make a dual motor all wheel drive chassis? On the inside, yep, it's a Rivian. You can see that it shares most of the structure and controls of an Amazon van. It's right hand drive, so rural ma mail carriers can put letters into the mailboxes on the side of the road. Rivian has delivered to Amazon some delivery vans for use in Europe, and it was assumed that right-hand drive models would eventually make their way to the UK. Given what we see here, I would assume yes. The controls and displays are right out of the Rivian van, with some tweaks to the user interface due to the differences with the C250e. For example, Amazon vans have cameras all over the place. They have a backup camera, sure, front camera and side mirror cameras, that little nipple thing there, that's a washer to keep the lens clean. There are more cameras along the top. All of these can be stitched together to form a 360-degree bird's-eye view of the van for parking. The C250e, though, doesn't. It has a backup camera, and rather than display that low on the center display, there's a kind of a cheap-looking but very functional monitor mounted high where you would expect to see a rear-view mirror. It's very user-friendly, although not that high-tech looking. Amazon vans also have a dash cam system from Netrodyne. Now, many fleets use systems like this to build good driving habits and to investigate the inevitable accident that happens. The Amazon van also has cameras that are in the pathway of the wiper blades. That usually means they're for a driver assistant feature. It's not for hands-free driving on the highway, but for automatic emergency braking, or some other safety feature. According to an interview in Fleet Owner Magazine with the parent company of Morgan Olson, Rivian's 360-degree camera system and automatic emergency braking could be integrated if Canadian Post wants. But since the ICE version of the C250 does not have those features, they decided to keep it simple for the first vans. There's a second jump seat for an assistant or a trainee, it has a fan, but don't worry, air conditioning and a heated seat is offered. Some of the controls are in physical switches below the touchscreen. Unlike sporty cars that offer seatbelts in pretty colors to match the vehicle, commercial vehicles often come with orange seatbelts. Why? Well, that's so police can easily spot when the driver has seatbelts on or they forgot. CP already has an electric demonstration fleet in British Columbia and Quebec, it's likely that some of the C250e vans will join them for a trial to see how they perform. The Rivian chassis and powertrain will come from its Illinois plant and get shipped as a skateboard to the Morgan Olson plant in Virginia to be mated to the body. That's pretty typical. A stripped chassis with a steering column goes from one company to the bodybuilder. In the same article, they hinted that they are looking to develop other van configurations off of the Rivian platform. It wouldn't make sense to make their own version of the ECV van for package delivery, but for grocery delivery or some other specialized market, that could come next. If you found this video informative, go ahead and give it a like. They did not have this particular van at the Ride and Drive event, but I will be putting out some other videos from that and elsewhere in the show. And as I say in Canada, thanks for watching, eh?